Welcome to Gulfstream today, Ron Nicoletti, along with Katie Stazak. Uh, it is a beautiful day in South Florida. Uh, we have a fast main track, firm turf course. We were off the grass yesterday, but that is be behind us now and everything. It is really nice out. Nice, cool breeze. The, the temperature doesn't seem to be that hot. The humidity, I think the dew point is down to 68 or something like that today. So it should be a fun day, Katie. Race number three, we got a Rainbow Six carryover of $15,000 plus today. So that, with an eight race card, starts in race number three. We also got a pretty nice carryover in the Super High Five in the last race, $4,800, just a little bit over $4,800. And Katie, we had our first two-year-old race of the season yesterday for the Phillies. Today we have an open division uh, for the two-year-olds, and that's an exciting time of year at Goldstein Park. Oh, it's so exciting. There's so much to look forward to this summer with the Florida Sire Stakes six races, an open division, a Philly division, and we see such promising runners come out of it. We've had champions come out of it, and it's just a very exciting time of year because these young horses have so much promise. And the winner of yesterday's first two-year-old race of the year, Silent Prayer, a half-sibling to sing praises who won two of the three legs of the open division of the Florida Sire Stakes last yeah, year. Yeah, from the Stanley Gold Barn, and uh, I talked to Stanley Gold j just before the two-year-olds started to uh, get ready to run and everything, and he said, boy, I got a bar full of nice one. So uh, he was right about the, the Philly yesterday and uh, that was an exciting time. And just so you know, we don't have those. Uh, we used to start, you know, earlier in April with, uh, you know, three furlong races straight down the line. Jockeys didn't carry the whip. That's not the case now. They go around the one turn and they do carry the whips and everything. And I watched the race yesterday from up on the scale house and boy, those horses ran straight and through, through the stretch. We didn't have anybody being goofy or anything. Very so, professional. Yeah, it was very professional. It was a nice race. We got one of those today. We'll get to that in a little while, but we're going to start our first race today with a Five for a long turf sprint starter, optional claimer, Phillies three-year-olds. And uh, this one here, we have one jockey change and one scratch. The jockey change comes on number two. And uh, then the rider is going to be Leandro Conclaves. And note that the main track only, number eight competitive edge is a scratch. And we're going to start you off with a video of Knox County Zip. Yeah, I really like Knox County Zip, and I liked her in this last race, and I think she's going to move forward off of it today. You're going to see why. She's going to take the lead into the stretch. This is an allowance from April 2nd. Just going to get caught at the wire by a filly named Little Michelle, who is very talented in her own right. Knox County Zip has just been running against Tougher. Going to see her here just getting caught late right there, and that's a, that's a pretty short neck there, really. It was a nice run. I think she should be at her fittest today. This will be her third start back from more than a six-month layoff, and Edgar Prado is going to stay aboard for trainer Michael Trombetta. Yeah, I like it for all the reasons you mentioned. Certainly looks like the one to beat, and you know, as you mentioned, good connections, and I also, and you did too, look, I used the number two, Goodbye Sorrow, in second, and this one should have those uh, proverbial screws tightened after returning from an almost four-month layoff to finish third. That was against $35,000 claiming this at this distance. Wesley Ward, really good with horses making their second start after a 45 to 180 day layoff. Leandro Conclavis, that's the one where we mentioned the jockey change today. It looks like a, a logical contender, but I'm siding with you that uh, the one Knox County Zip is the one to beat. Well, she has the edge in terms of back class, but you never want to count out the connections with Wesley Ward, especially coming off a layoff. We both saw things identically in this race. We both have the five capping out the ticket, Catfight Cowgirl. And this is a filly that I've really liked from the start and really was always putting on the ticket. She was kind of disappointing just a little bit. But I'm going to give her another shot today because look at the company that she's faced in her past few races. You see names in her past performances like Asia, who is undefeated. Liz Moore, graded stakes place, Spanish Pipe Dream, a stakes winner, and Consumer Credit, a graded stakes winner. So she's not going to face the likes of those today. I think she can move forward as well in this spot. And she had a little bit of trouble at the start last time out. She uh, broke, uh, a little bit broke out with it at the start prior to finishing. She was really running well. She was finishing a fast closing fourth. You saw in our video, we didn't point her out, but she was coming fast behind Knox County Zip in that last race. Jose Pinchin is the trainer, and uh, apprentice Tyler Gaffleon, who we mentioned, you, know, you mentioned yesterday, is now the leading rider at this uh, spring summer meet. He's been riding in great form. Yeah, and he's an apprentice, a five-pound bug leading our jockey standings. Congratulations to him. He's riding well. You definitely want to keep that in mind when you're handicapping who's hot. Yeah, he's hot, and, and that's the way to go. I always tell people when they come to the track and never been, I said, well, what's the first things you do? I said, the first things you do, get a program, see who the leading trainer is, who the leading owner, who the leading jockey is at the particular time. You can't go wrong by looking at them because uh, those, those 
the barns are doing well and those jocks are doing well at a particular time. We're going to go to race number two. It's a one-mile claimer, four-year-olds and up, $10,000 the claiming of tag in here. And this kicks off our first of two pick fours in the afternoon. And, Katie, you went with the number four, old time's sake. And I'm pretty happy about that you went with that one on top. I wanted to, and I didn't. I went with Palatine Hill. Tell me why you switched these two. Well, this one has won two of his last three starts and finished second in the other. Really has a recent form on his side. This is trained by Herman Walensky, and he lost this gelding via the claim two starts back. This is really why I had to give the edge and put this horse on top. Lost him via the claim two starts back, claims him right back out of his next start. So he really likes this horse. It says a lot about him. Four for five in the money at Gulfstream and three for five going a mile. Two for three at this level of competition. I think this is just a great spot for him and he figures in this race. Yeah, owned by Amity Racing and they jumped right back in. Owner and trainer went back in to get this horse reclaimed. Number four all time sake. With that said, I had that on the ticket for the exact reasons you mentioned. But I also used on top of my ticket the five Palatine Hill who's dropping to the $10,000 level after returning from a layoff to finish a somewhat disappointing fourth last time. And he was the three to five favorite. But that was against $16,000 optional Claimers going a mile in the 16th. Peter Walder really strong with the second start off this type of layoff. And we mentioned Tyler Gaffleone. He'll be riding this horse today. And this is a four-time winner at the mile. Nine starts, four wins, a second and two-thirds. So likes the distance, good bond, drop down, lots of things to like about the five Palatine Hill. He's a local favorite. He's run so well here. And today is going to be the first time that he's run in a straight claiming race since last March. He really should capitalize off that class relief, but he did disappoint me a little bit last time out. I had him on top last time out, so hopefully he can move forward from that, but I wasn't completely sold after having watched that last start. Yeah, I mean, that's a little bit of shaky. You know, the drop is what got me, and just watching Peter Walder over the years, how he does second off the bench, how he does it. You have the number two global global question, easy for me to say, in second. I think this one's a candidate for an improved performance today. Absolutely. His fourth place finish last time out in a starter allowance broke a three-race win streak for him. He should be better when dropping back in for a price tag as well. And he's a four-time winner at the distance. It's the old bounce rebound angle on <laughs> number two in their global question. I love saying that. I had in my analysis, if you read my analysis today, love throwing that line in. I don't know why. Just always liked it. Hey, third race. This is what I mentioned. This is an open division now of uh, two-year-olds. And what we mean by open division, it's Colts. All Phillies can run if they want, and there is one in here today from the Wesley Ward barn, but this is the open division. Four and a half furlongs, made in two-year-olds. I went with the number eight fellowship on top of my ticket. Son of Awesome, of course, debuting for trainer Stanley Gold. Solid morning work tab. Looks awful familiar to the horse that won yesterday. It includes a half-mile bullet workout on April 23rd. 47 and 4. The barn is really good with their freshman runners. They proved that yesterday. Jesus Rizos in the saddle today. And I put this one on top of my ticket. You did go with the number two to Philly against the boys in here. Long road. I did. And you know what? I was really intrigued by this pedigree. What a nice pedigree. The sire name is a little bit unfamiliar because he's from Australia. It's the sire's name is Lonro, but he is a top sire in Australia. Listen to this horse's resume. An 11-time Group 1 winner was Australia's Horse of the Year in his five-year-old season, and he's done very well with his two-year-olds. He actually sired a juvenile Triple Crown winner over in Australia who was undefeated in his two-year-old season. She's out of an unraced street cry mare. I just love the pedigree. She's been working strongly, and yes, she's a Philly running against the boys, but trainer Wesley Ward does so well with his two-year-olds as well as Stanley Gold, and he did the same thing throwing a Philly in with the boys up at Keeneland a few weeks ago, and she also won. Yeah, I don't take much stock in Phillies against the boys when they're, uh, you know, two-year-olds in the beginning of their careers. They're pretty much even. They're all just saying, oh, what the heck are we doing? Let's run and keep running uh, the, the horses and race. I like the stats on the number four, and I'm glad you put this one on your ticket, the four Wind Clan Warrior. He's a son of win early sire Benny the Bull, and I looked at Benny the Bull. His uh, first-time starters, two-year-old first-time starters are 
are 7 for 22, 32%. Uh, you know, with the two-year-olds making their first start, and that is by far the best the percentage of anybody in the race. Tyler Gaffleone, a uh, name to ride, and there is going to be, uh, there's an unpublished workout that you will get uh, when uh, Pete Aiello comes up. He worked at the Ocala Horse Complex, 38.30 out of the gate, so when you factor in in your handicap, you know, take that uh, work into consideration. I went with the stats in this one, 10 to 1 in the morning line. Don't, not going to get that because of the two scratches in the race. One of those other scratches from the, the Wesley Ward barn. He was the other filly in the race. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree, but I think definitely worth putting on the ticket. Not a lot of works, but some strong, solid work. Yeah, and I just like the stats, and that's the fun about two-year-olds, because you can look up all the breeding and all the different stats and see how they run, and until they get start running back against each other, that's the best way to go with these two-year-olds. Thir the fourth race this afternoon, six furlongs, maiden claim is Phillies three-year-olds, 50000 down to $40,000. We'll have eight runners going to the post. And I went with the two in here. Meet me for a smoke, who's cutting back to three quarters of a mile on the main track. Set a pressured pace last time out, weak and late, to get beat. Got beat five and a half lengths, but it was, again, $50,000 maidens. That was going a two-turn mile on the turf. And uh, Dave Kassin, really good with horses, going from the turf to the dirt. He's about 24% in Dave Kassin, uh, spending all the time now here in South Florida. He'll be here throughout the summer and of course during our uh, you know championship during the winter and I just thought this was a logical choice on that one you did go with the number four fakery on top of your ticket and I'm hoping she doesn't fake me out <laughs> today because I think she's going to really build off of a useful debut last time out finished second at first asking against $35,000 maiden claimers close from five wide to get up for the place and then was able to hold off a late run from a closer to kind of keep and secure that position I thought that was pretty professional I think she can move forward She'll be fitter in the second start. And I thought she figured Jonathan Gonzalez has also been riding very well. Riding very well. And Chuck Simon, a limited amount of starters, has been doing okay. He started off like a house on the fire. It's sort of leveled out right now. But this horse definitely has to be on your ticket. Along, I thought, with the number two, Meet Me for a Smoke. This is the uh, first leg of our pick five. As I mentioned, the Rainbow Six starts in that third race with the two-year-olds. Other horse I used on the ticket is Breezy Song. He's another one in this race that's turning back uh, to a sprint on the dirt after showing speed and retreating when going two turns on the grass. Stanley Gold has won labor in the saddle. And, you know, I'm always enamored with that. Speed on the grass, turning back to a sprint on the main track. Uh, you know, up there, Seth Spreezy song, 12 to 1 on the morning line. A little bit of a long shot, Juan Labor uh, in the saddle today. Breezy Song has been pretty consistent up there. I just, she's, she's made a lot of starts and <laughs> hasn't been able to get it done. And that's why I couldn't put her on the ticket, but definitely figures in the race, especially with the connections. I threw in a horse that's going to be making a first start. So <laughs> getting a blank slate today. And we'll see what she's able to show. Rock all day. Uh, daughter of Monbrook, who's pretty good with his debuting progeny. They win at a 16% clip in maiden races. The works aren't brilliant, but I think this is a nice spot for her to make the debut. Well, let's go to race number five this afternoon. We're back on the turf. As we mentioned at the top of the show, the turf course is listed as firm today. Seven and a half furlongs. These are maiden claimers, three-year-olds and up. $16,000. Scratch the number eight, Massive John. And we want to go back and show you a performance from uh, Radamel back on, I believe it's April 25th. It was April 25th. Then we're going to show you this is a... Uh, $12,500 maiden claimer, and Radamel is not going to have a great start of things. Watch here. Has to completely miss the break, then completely take up. Spots the field several lengths. And I thought, really, look at him completely last here. He's actually going to make a run for it, going to rally to get up for second in his turf debut. I was pretty impressed by this effort, considering all the trouble that he had. I really thought he could have just stopped at that point but he kept on tires a little bit hangs a little bit in the stretch there but I think he can build off of that last start for trainer Roderick Rodriguez who's actually doing pretty well this year winning at a 17 percent clip in 2015. Yeah I agree the horse is a major player with a green trip but we both did put the number six uh, one for CJ this one was a little disappointing last time out so what are they doing today they're dropping him to the $16,000 level they're stretching him out to two turns again didn't think he was going to like the five furlongs left of last time out. He failed to get on track. That was against $25,000 maidens, as I mentioned, going five-eighths of a mile. mile. It's the son of Tufelsberg, uh, trained by Ralph Nix, ridden by Tyler Gaffleone today, and clearly does his best running when he's going longer. And I think the drop, the apprentice, the weight break, and everything like that is all positives for number six, one for CJ. Couldn't understand the five furlongs last time out. He didn't look like a five furlong type of horse to me, at least. I 
could not agree more. Yeah. I saw the stretch out today, and I got very excited and had to give him the edge, really, for that reason. He did show a lot of promise, finished an encouraging third and fourth when going a mile back in February and March. I think this is a great spot for him today. Yeah, we both have the number seven, as we mentioned. You saw the reasoning why this horse reared at the start and ran exceptionally well. The other horse I used on my ticket was the nine, Drimmer, going back to what looks like his preferred surface to me after a strange outing on the main track as the favorite. He, you know, he went up there and he was he, he just was like fractious early and then he went up and he was eased late. I think the drop back down to the turf course fits nicely uh, with this level of competition. A little bit of a guess there after that uh, goofy performance last time out. Third choice on the morning line and I know you did go with the number one who is my next horse to throw in the ticket, Mesa Way. Yeah, it could be a nice value at 8-1 to one and pretty consistent. He's hit the board in five of nine starts at this distance. Just seems to have a consistency edge over the field in that regard. Should move forward in his second start off more than a six-month layoff. Yeah, and I think you go a little deep in that race. I'm not convinced that there's anybody you could single. So when you're putting your, your tickets together, your final pick four or whatever tickets, I think you got to go a little deep in there. So maybe you found a horse a little early on or a little later where you can single and go a little deeper here. Let's go to the sixth race. This one, five furlongs on the turf. These are claimers. They're fillies and mares. They're three and up. They're non-winners of two races in life. $16,000. Scratch the main track only runner. A number 11 front cover dream. And we both went with the number one sweet Amy. This one's going to depart from the rail today uh, after returning from that 11 month, uh, 11 week freshening to run pretty good. Yeah, she did. Took the lead right into the stretch and faded at this level and distance. That was back on April 16th. Was her first start in almost three months. And she earned the highest last out buyer of the field for that effort, a 60. Got to respect the connections and trainer Kirk Zadie. He's on a hot streak right he's now. He's in a hot streak right now, and I don't know the exact thing. I, you know, if you look at the current stats, he's like five for his last six, but someone told me yesterday that he's nine out of his last ten or, or nine out of his last eleven. That is amazing for a trainer. He is on fire. So the bond, sweet Amy looks like a logical choice in there. The horse I used in second, we differ, uh, oh, sort of differ afterwards. We both have the six. I went with the three. What's up, kiddo? And this one should be primed and ready to offer more. Returned from almost a nine-month layoff to finish, I thought, a workman-like seventh behind aforementioned uh, Sweet Amy. And I think Herman Walensky is pretty good. Uh, he doesn't have a big sampling, but one, he's one for two. So 50% with horses making a second start for greater than 180-day layoff. Didn't run that badly last time out. And I just think a horse here, a little bit of a price, uh, may be able to close and get up and grab a share in that particular race. I think June Flower at a little bit of a price, too, could be a nice value and do something in this race at 10 to 1. Going to look to make it two in a row after getting up in time to break her maiden for a $12,500 price tag on April 19th. That was also her first start in three months, so I was impressed that she was able to break through with her first win after coming off a long layoff. Uh, finished third in, in another try turf sprinting, so she's done well when running in these types of races. Facing winners, though, for the first time is tough. That's why I couldn't put her higher. Yeah, number six, Sikar, who we both have on top of our tickets. So Sikar, almost sounds like cigar, certainly not cigar, is getting some uh, class relief after failing to earn a check. But that was a pair at the $35,000 level, and it was as simple to me. I, I'm not enamored with those two previous starts, but I think the drop is going to help this horse. Absolutely, that's what I saw as well. Eddie Castro, too, uh, in, in the saddles for, uh, so, uh, for Rodolfo Garcia. So uh, on the class drop, another horse. Another horse where, uh, you know, I think, you know, the top two, you know, Sweet Amy might be a horse you might think about singling in there. Now let's go to race number seven, and I find this race really interesting. It's a one-mile turf event. Claim is three-year-olds and up. Non-winners of two races in life or three-year-olds, straight three-year-olds. 30000 down to $25,000. Jockey change on the two. Uh, crown the kitten. Make the ride Leandro Conclavas. And I want to go back and show you a performance uh, from uh, the horse uh, eight uh, touchdown kitten today. And you can look at this horse's last race back on April 17th. Didn't have much of a, a chance after this. You'll see this happening right now that day. Touchdown Kitten is coming up here and just gets, uh, you'll see it right now, just gets slammed right into the rail there. Gets shuffled back to last and, you know, behind the field. And basically the day was over. They wrapped up on the horse. So I just thought that maybe that horse, I wanted to show that because that basically eliminated that horse's chances in that race. We both went with the number one, all my memories on top. But I had to throw that horse, Touchdown Kitten, on my ticket. I'll tell you about it in a second after you tell them about the one all my memories well i had to throw crown a kitten also or touchdown kitten rather on the ticket 
All my memories, though, really also ran very nicely last time out. Dueled to the wire and just missed the win by a neck. Has finished second in each of his two starts at Gulfstream. Seems to like the track, but seems to like it here. They were both at this level as well. Not a lot of speed in this race, so that was why I had to give him the edge on top. Shouldn't be pressured as much this time around, and perhaps he can hold on all the way this time. Yeah, I just think that he's got that tactical ability to use that inside post to its advantage in there. So, I, I reason I had it on top. As I mentioned, the eight touchdown kit moved to the uh, Dan Peter Barn V to claim. Going to wear blinkers today. You saw what happened to it last time and just uh, had uh, got, got knocked out of the race. But that was against a horse I, uh, I like in there, and that was Escondido, was on a two-race win streak. So I like the, the, the ability that, this, I mean, the, the, uh, Matt, the class this horse was facing last time out. Didn't have a chance to run. I like the bond change. I like the blinkers on. So I threw it on the ticket. I'm saying, you know, 10 to 1, I believe, on the morning line. Yeah, I have the other kitten on the ticket, and that is Crown the Kitten, which you also have. This is a stakes winner, taking a big class drop for this race. Has has never run for a tag before, and he actually ran at Royal Ascot. So talk about back class and the competition that this one has faced. He's been running in upper level allowances as of late, but hasn't been able to hit the board in three starts since last October. But he's going to be fresh today and against this company. I think you're really going to see him show up for trainer Wesley Ward. Yeah, as you mentioned, the stakes winner at age two on the grass in Europe. Lots of things to like and great connections with Wesley Ward. As we mentioned, uh, that's the jockey changing there. Leandro Conclaves on the saddle, but you did all also used the number three in here, Dance of Freedom, who I did not use on my ticket, uh, written today by Luca Panic. Well, I find the equipment change intriguing. He's going to shed the blinkers in his second start back from a two-month freshening, so maybe won't be quite as keen this time around. And should appreciate some class relief as well after running in mostly allowance starts. He broke his maiden for $35,000, so he should fit right in amongst this group. Fun race. Fun I race. like that race. I really like that race. Let's go to the nightcap on for Thursday afternoon. It's a one mile claimer. Four year olds and up non winners of three races in life or race in six months. Uh, that's uh, November 7th. There is one jockey change in here, and that comes on the number one. Make the mo ride of Manny Aguilar. Full field of 12 runners in here. Certainly looks like a horse is the one to beat, and that's the 12 predicting. But these big full fields uh, are tough to handicap. And this is where we have the super high five with over $4,000 plus in the pool. I think predicting is the one to beat in here. Absolutely. Just plummeting in class for the start. Drop into the bottom from where he's been running. He's been running in starter allowances, and he has three wins at the distance. He really figures, and for me, was immediately the horse that I saw to put on top of the ticket. Yeah, and he's got a previous win over this track. Four previous starts with a win and a third. Looks like the one to yeah, I did use the number four. Feels like flying, stretching out to a mile. First start, if you go back and look, press the pace. He finished fourth. That was against $8,000 condition. Claim is going seven-eighths of a mile. It was right here on March 8th. The trainer is Dario Vega. This is what I like. 24% with the 31 to 60 day layoff. And what do you like about him? He's got a bullet workout in 101.4. Uh, not a many, uh, you know, not horses running at that distance that particular day. But I just think the, the barn is good with this type of layoff. Shows that he's, uh, you know, got some uh, ability in the morning. He's working well. So I threw him on the ticket and he's on the board at 5 to 1. I have a Divine Michael in second on my ticket at 6-1. to one. Returned for more than a three-month layoff to finish third at this level and distance on April 22nd. He's 7 for 12 in the money at a mile, and both of his career wins came at this distance. So I thought he'd be a nice fit in here. Well, you know, we got the super high five in here, so we agreed with the 12, but that was it. I used the 10 <laughs> Midas terms, hoping to bounce back on a fast track. He showed speed last time. He faded against similar on the wet track, listed as good. This horse does not like wet tracks. You look at his past performance, so I thought he'd bounce back. And in my analysis, I said, well, watch the skies and bet accordingly. And you can look at the skies today. They're absolutely beautiful. So he's going to get some fast running. thought he was a nice horse to put on the ticket. Ten to one. You got Harry Hernandez, a seven-pound apprentice. Been pretty impressive so far. He has, and really there are a lot of ways you could go in this race outside of the 9-5 to five favorite in predicting. You could make a case for a lot of these horses to show up. I think the Super High Five is going to be a really intriguing bet today. But in the Rainbow Six, maybe you take a chance in singling in the final leg. That would be, that'd be a pretty gutsy move to do, but I wouldn't disagree with somebody that wanted to do that. I capped my ticket with the 8. LG's Little Man, again, at 8-1, to one, could have some more value and another option because this is the 
you know, fifth horse that we've mentioned in this race. He's going to be making his Gulfstream debut. Finished third in his last start at Tampa Bay Downs on April 24th. Numbers-wise, I just thought he figured in here. He yeah, has some shown some relative consistency at this level and, again, adds value to the ticket. Yeah, I actually, when you see my Rainbow Six ticket a little long, I didn't single it, but I only used two in the last race, which I try and use more because you hate to get bounced out, but I really think 12 predicting is the one to beat in the end. That's the 9 to 5 morning line, but I also added the 4 on my ticket. I just couldn't single a, t a horse in a 12 horse field. Only went too deep, but uh, that's a little later on. Good luck when you put your Rainbow Six ticket together. We got a fast main track. We got a firm turf course. Pretty nice carryover in the Rainbow Six, a little over $15,000. And we got a two year old race. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting day, and what a difference a day makes. We had no turf racing yesterday. We're firm today. So hats off to the South Florida weather and also to our track maintenance crew here at Gulfstream. Enjoy the day, and best of luck with your selections.